I went I went to the Nets versus Bucks game seven game and obviously the the Bucks won, the Nets lost. And I don't feel bad about it. You know, I, I would have felt worse Great if, experience. if uh F. the Bucks blew the Nets out of the water, but it took a Kyrie injury, Harden ham Harden's hamstring <sighs> injury, which he was playing through a grade two hamstring, which is pretty crazy. I mean <laughs> after that I definitely fear the beard. And it took the Bucks seven games and overtime to beat the Nets. I'm glad I'm glad we're getting right into it. I'm really glad. Me too, man. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously the Nets had expectations to win a championship this season. Would you classify this season as a failure for the Brooklyn Nets? <laughs> failure is such a I, I wouldn't failure is such a strong word. Is it unsu- is it is it a unsuccessful season? Yes, but they, should they feel bad about it? No. You know, this year dealing with all the injuries and the fact that everybody was hurt, you know, walking into playoffs, you didn't have your three best guys at the same time, only for the Boston series. You know, it was tough to even go into that Milwaukee game. Granted, they did have opportunities to win that series nonetheless, but I think this year you got a little, even though we only got about, what, 13 games of the big three playing together, you kind of got a taste of what they're going to be going down the line and just getting those guys healthy next year should be the goal. But I think this year, being that they the, the goal was championship or bust, you know, obviously it has to be an unsuccessful season. But I don't think the Nets fans should feel bad about it. This is the team that everybody admitted would beat them. If not for any other team, Milwaukee would be their biggest challenge. And granted, like you said, Kyrie getting hurt, Harden playing on a, a bad hamstring, Still, seven games, Kevin Durant did everything he could, so I think they should feel good about this season. They should feel good about the fact that they've grown as a team and the next year should be the real championship or bust season. Oh, I definitely agree with you. I think next season fans definitely should be looking forward to, but if we're talking strictly about this season, I think I have to look as it look at it as a failure. I mean, you have Ke- uh, Kevin Durant, Harden, Kyrie. KD just came off a torn Achilles. You really didn't expect him to be the one out of the three to – play this deep into the season. Uh, You have Harden, who has, up until this point, been basically have a clean bill of health his entire career. Then you have Kyrie, who's been, since leaving uh, Cleveland, has struggled with some injuries. Even back uh, in his time with Cleveland, he struggled with uh, an ankle injury in the finals. So I feel like you, you look at anything other than a championship this year with those three guys together on the same team, I feel like I have to look at it, at it as a failure, especially with the uh, extra year of miles on all three of these guys' body, especially with KD, the way that he was playing. He's playing the best basketball of his career. The fact that not one of those guys could show up for him and help him out to, to get him to the next round was truly surprising to me. Of course, like you mentioned, Harden uh, playing with a grade two hamstring. I'm not going to crucify him that much. But you think he he he's twenty five percent of himself. This is an easy win for the Nets, and I just feel like a ch- without a championship, you put these three together for no reason, essentially. But of course, if we're looking towards the future, I'm pretty confident these three could get it done. But off this season alone, it's got to be a failure. The goal was to make the NBA Finals. The goal was to win the NBA championship. The goal was to prove me right in oh, yeah, saying they wrong. were going to win the net. They were going to win the championship. Because if they would have won, I would have been right in the NFL <laughs> and in the NBA. I would have been two for two. It would have boosted up my resume a lot. But because the Nets didn't do that, it's it's you know I feel bad about it. Now I, I'll say a couple of things about the crying. <laughs> <laughs> we we look at this Nets team and they went through a ton of adversity. Harden with the hamstring injury, grade two. It takes four weeks to recover. He came back in a week to to help the Nets win. Huge props to him, but I'll get into him in a minute. <laughs> LaMarcus Aldridge retired. That was big. And this they could have really used him this series. He, I think he would have been that difference, LaMarcus Aldridge, definitely. Jeff Green was injured, too. He came back prematurely. And then Kyrie, his ankle injury. The Nets had so much going against them, and it still took the Bucks everything they had and more to beat them in an overtime game on the road. And... I think right now we can possibly say the Bucks should be the favorites to win the finals. If it's not them, it's it's Phoenix. Yep. It's either them or Phoenix. Either way, they're one of the favorites. The healthiest so, teams. Exactly. Either way, they're one of the favorites. You know, I, I said it before the before the series. Whoever wins this series, I think, is winning the championship. And I hope that's not the case because I hope Phoenix does beat Milwaukee. 
because right now everybody, you know, I made a video about Giannis on TikTok and everybody's like, oh, you still think Giannis can't be the best player on the championship team? He hasn't won a championship yet. Let's see if he wins a championship. This is his best shot to win it. We'll see if he does it. But the Nets have a ton of free agents. Spencer Dinwiddie, Blake Griffin, Jeff Green, and Bruce Brown and Mike James are restricted free agents. Dinwiddie's gone. He's leaving. I don't know where, but he's leaving, and I'm glad. Because this guy is one of the cockiest players in the NBA. All he does is talk smack on Twitter, especially about the Knicks, which is why I despise Dinwiddie. And Dinwiddie's a role player. He's not. He's not. He thinks he's a star, but he's not a star. He's a sixth man of the year candidate. If he comes off the bench, he's a borderline starter. He, if he starts for a team at point guard anywhere else, he is what Reggie Jackson was at Detroit, just a fill-in starter. That's what Dinwiddie is. He's nothing special. Sheesh. Blake Griffin. Blake Griffin cat. is probably going to leave. I think he played his way into a nice contract. I don't think he comes back to Brooklyn on the vet minimum because the Nets have, they're over the cap by $46.4 million. So Blake Griffin, Jeff Green, possibly gone unless they want a ring chase. I think Bruce Brown stays and he's very important. But the good thing about 2021 is that there are a lot of veteran free agents. You got Eagle Dollar, JJ Redick, whose family lives in Brooklyn and would like to, wanted to get traded to Brooklyn because he wanted to be with his family more. If I was Brooklyn, I trade Joe Harris, get another player, and sign Reddick because he would take the minimum, I think, to be with his family and to be closer to them for the majority of the season. Ibaka, if he declines his option, PJ Tucker's an option, JaVale McGee, Biombo, Carmelo, we talked about that before the podcast going to the Lakers, Dwight Howard, Danny Green, Trevor Reza. There are a lot of guys who could take the vet minimum and play with Brooklyn next season. So that's the good thing. Was this season a failure? Absolutely. Will they come back better next year? Absolutely. Will they win the championship next year? Absolutely. Uh. The, Heat, the Heat did not win a championship in their first year together with the big three. They actually lost to Dallas. And in my opinion, that loss to Dallas was more disheartening than the Nets lost to Milwaukee because Heat sure. were the favorites by far against yeah. Dallas. Yeah, like sure. and, they were, yeah. and they were healthy. So not a question. The big yeah, three. <laughs> so the big three in Miami didn't win a championship the first year. Nets didn't win a championship the first year, but they will their second year, and I have no oh. doubt about it. Oh God. Oh, let me tell you why it's a little different. This team, when you built this team, you knew the risk of building this team. Injuries were gonna play. The only thing, and I, I said it before, the only thing that's gonna damage the Nets is injuries. You know, injury prone Kyrie, and we thought injury prone KD. James Harden now all of a sudden catching the injury bug with a hamstring. This was the only thing that was going to threaten their chances at coming out the East, you know, and that's going to be the same thing next year. Injuries are going to play into a factor with their be with their three best guys. One guy goes down, it's damaging. Either Kyrie or Harden, we've seen it's still damaging. Harden coming back early than expected. You know, we wanted him to play his heart out, but it still didn't affect the Bucks that much. They're, they're up 3-2. They lose two straight. Game six in Milwaukee, and then they lose game seven in Brooklyn. I just think, like, with this team, you know, that's always going to be a risk. You know, I don't think guys like P.J. Tucker is going to leave the team. He just is, might go to the chip with. You know, I think guys like Melo is going to look to play with LeBron. Serge Ibaka, I think he's going to want to stay with his buddy Kawhi if they end up staying on the Clippers, you know. I just – I see, like, people want to go to the Nets, but I just – I don't know with the team being – the top three guys being injury prone, it's going to be hard to really – bring guys like that and then you said trade Joe Harris granted he played terrible the last four games like once they left Brooklyn the first time he just fell off a cliff but he has led the league in three-point percentage I think two years in a row if I'm not mistaken definitely won JJ Redick I don't think he's as good as a sh shooter as Joe Harris is right now right now I don't think I, him? I would disagree. I don't think they're the same shooter, in my opinion. I, I don't. I don't know. I think you know. I would. I would probably keep the six six guy. You know, being that he's already with that team, he's fitting that system. I mean, but and considering the fact that his stock is probably low right now, considering how bad he just played the last four games, I don't know what you're going to get out of him. I don't know what you what else you need out of him. But you know, getting JJ Redick would probably be good too. I think if you can keep both guys. You would get both, but it's going to be tough because this team is going to be dealing with injuries nonstop, and now Harden's a part of that plug. 
And what are they going to do with DeAndre Jordan? This is the thing. DeAndre Jordan, I think, has to get traded. Maybe the OKC got to give up a pick to get rid of him because he's taking up a bunch he's of just sitting pace. there. But this is the thing. Joe Harris, to me, I just don't trust him in the playoffs mm. because this isn't the first time that he stunk it up in the playoffs. Yeah. This is It's been two series already that he's done it versus Philly and now Milwaukee where you need him a lot. And J.J. Reddick, to me, is the same level of shooter as him. Harris is better off the dribble. He can get to the yeah. basket better because he's younger, granted. I, I understand that. Hmm? Harris is 30. All right, he's still younger. Is he not younger than J.J. Reddick? I mean, but come on. You made it seem like he's... 30, 30 is prime in basketball. Yeah, that's true. That's still prime. I mean, yeah, that's true. I mean, J.J., I, I think you can't have both because Joe Harris, if he's... I mean, if J.J. comes for the minimum... That's true, but if Harris stays, Reddick is not going to get any minutes. You know, Landry Shamit is still there. Mm-hmm. You, know, you, take I would, Shammett, you would definitely want Reddick to take Shamit minutes. I don't know. Shamit played relatively Shammett, well. Shamit played well. He played well. So you would keep Shamit but trade I, Joe and Because you could, get, you could get something of value for trading Joe Harris right now. Right now? Right now. For I mean, he had a bad playoff series, but you mm-hmm. look at everything else. He's getting paid 18 mil. I mean, if I'm, if I'm the Nets, what I'm doing. Well, they said Joe is a Brooklyn. He's a, he's a Net. That's okay, what they said. Whatever. Let, everybody <laughs> says that before they get traded. That's true. So That's it doesn't matters. really matter. They yeah. traded IT. Anything can happen. All I'm saying yeah. is that the Nets, they, they should trade Joe Harris because I think they don't need a guy like that. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it's tough to say because he's a great three point shooter, but they have enough offense. With KD, Kyrie, and Harden, they have enough offense. They just need players to fill in. What they really need on that starting lineup to replace Harris is a Three and D player. Who's that? Look, Iggy. The, the perfect player for the Nets, who I Mad think, old. who I think would go to the Nets because he's close with Harden, he's close with KD, is PJ Tucker. PJ Tucker would elevate them I to don't the think next he's level. He's going there. Where would he go? If he I think there? he would stay. I was gonna say, why would he stay in Milwaukee? They're they about win? to win a chip. Yeah, they are. If they don't win, why would he stay? They, but if they do win, why would he go to play with the team he just beat? Like he just beat you because up. he's really close with Kevin Durant and James Harden. I don't see it personally. I don't, I don't know about that. I see it. I if see he it wins a chip, I don't see PJ. I don't. I don't see PJ going to play with you guys after he just won a chip with that team. I think he'll stay. Even then, I see Javale McGee as an option. Okay, I, I think he would be really good. Look, you I, need I a think, defensive big, and may, maybe not even Redick. If I was Brooklyn, I'd probably prioritize Danny Green over Redick, mm. and I'd have Danny Green, who's a defender yep. and a three point shooter, knockdown guy. So that's what I would do if I'm Brooklyn. So I think that's what's next for the Brooklyn Nets. Obviously, the season. Was not a success. Nobody can call it a success if they didn't win a championship. And I'm, before we move on, I want to say this about James Harden. He shot two for 12 from three. Five for 17, I believe, from the field for 22. the game. 22. It wasn't 22. It wasn't? It wasn't. Must be thinking somebody you else. Do your fact checking, man. You got it wrong, too. No, it wasn't. It's you five said, for, I think. It's five, five. I think. I thought it was five. Five for 17. Okay. Two for 12. Nine okay. rebounds, nine assists. How many points did he end up with? 22, surprisingly. James Harden... Was on a bad hamstring. He came back prematurely. I'm just glad he didn't get hurt again and didn't have an even more severe injury. But he has to play better. Even with the bad hamstring, he got open shots and didn't hit them. If he hits some of those open shots, they win the series and they go on to the Eastern Conference Finals. So James Harden, even though I love him to death, he reminds me a lot of Luka, like I've mentioned before on this podcast. The difference with Luka is that he steps up in really big moments. We've seen Luka in two playoff series back-to-back be one of the best playoff performers that we've seen in the last 10 years and in history since I've been watching basketball. Harden has not been that. Harden, when you need him the most, there's still that nervousness that he's not going to be what he was in the regular season, and that's the difference with Luka. So James Harden, he has to win a championship, and he has to be one of the main catalysts for winning that championship next year because I love Harden, but I can't keep defending him. 